I'm Jesse. And I'm Willa. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript fills you in on the new iPhone announcement, investigates what recent developments in immigration policy may mean for undocumented students, and Hamped Up explores disparity in attendance at sports events. The U.S. Department of Justice has declined to bring charges against the six police officers involved in the arrest and subsequent death of Baltimore resident Freddie Gray. In April of 2015, Gray died after he suffered a spinal injury in police custody. The death of Mr. Gray was met with mass protests in Baltimore. The officers were acquitted in a state trial. In August of 2016, the U.S. Department of Justice issued a report finding that the Baltimore Police Department continuously conducted unlawful stops and used excessive force, particularly targeting black residents. The death toll from Hurricane Irma has risen to 68, with 30 deceased in the United States alone across the states of Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. It is estimated that over 90% of the homes in the Florida Keys suffered damage, with around 25% considered destroyed. As of Wednesday night, close to 3.9 million people in Florida were still without power. Food and water are running low on the islands where Irma first hit. Ten people were recorded dead in the 72 hours when Irma crossed over Cuba. Combined, Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma may cost up to $200 billion in damages. The Secretary General of the United Nations and the UN Security Council has called on the government of Myanmar to end military action against Rohingya Muslims. The Secretary General acknowledged that the Muslim minority was being ethnically cleansed from the Buddhist-majority nation of Myanmar. Violence began on August 25th when Rohingya fighters attacked police. Since then, approximately 370,000 of the Rohingya population have fled to neighboring countries. The Rohingya have been denied citizenship in Myanmar since 1982 and have been subjected to routine violence and extreme living conditions. Hi, I'm Jordan Mills Murphy, and welcome to TechBits. On Tuesday, Apple released an Apple Watch alongside of three new phones. First off, none of these phones have jack. Headphone jack, that is. These phones were the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10, but it's spelled iPhone X. But to keep track of it, let's go to the chart. First off, all three phones have glass backs, which means they can have wireless charging. All three phones are just as water resistant as last year, which means that you can keep them under the water at a depth of three feet for about half an hour at most. They also have Apple's new A11 Bionic processor, which basically means it's a fast processor, good at multitasking. Lastly, all of them are available in 64 or 256 gigabytes, and all three of them are running iOS 11. Now to the nitty gritty. The iPhone 8 has a 4.7 inch display, just like last year, and a single 12 megapixel camera, and a fingerprint sensor. The iPhone 8 starts at $699, the iPhone 8 Plus also has a fingerprint sensor. However, it has two 12 megapixel cameras and a 5.5 inch display, but it'll start burning a hole in your wallet at $799. The 10 has an almost full screen display, excluding a small bar on the top for sensors and that beloved selfie camera. But wait, there's no home button? Well, say goodbye to that too, along with the headphone jack. Instead, you can swipe up to access the home screen. As far as unlocking your device, the iPhone X has a face sensor in the top bar. On the other side of the phone, you will find two 12 megapixel cameras oriented vertically. This model comes in space gray and silver and will start at $999, but has a maximum price of $1,149. Pretty expensive. <laughs> I'm Flor Castillo and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. On Tuesday, September 5th, Trump's administration releases a statement to cancel the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. So this week, I looked into how this issue has an impact on DACA students and families in Northampton Public Schools. 
So DACA is a, an executive order that was signed by President Obama in 2012. Um, and it's meant, it stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and it's geared toward giving some protections to children or people who are brought here to the United States as children by their parents illegally. And so they've spent most of their lives here in the United States, and many do not have any memories even of their home country. And so technically they're here illegally, they're not citizens of the United States, and they don't have a pathway to citizenship. Since Congress wasn't acting, he passed, well, he signed uh, an executive order to give them uh, protected status for two years in two-year increments, and that would allow them to get a social security card, um, get financial aid for college, and other protections that are guaranteed to people that are here legally. And every two years they have to go and check back in with um, immigration to make sure they haven't committed a crime or done some other thing that should make them ineligible to be part of DACA, to receive the benefits of DACA. I, I imagine that the, the unfortunate decision um, is already impacting our students and the way they come to school in terms of a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry. So there's probably some things going on that I can't control. I'm sure we have students here that have registered with DACA or they have family members that have registered with DACA. I know I have former students who are part of that and they're very, very scared. They have no idea what their future is going to hold. Um, some of, many of them have set up their lives here. This is all they know. They have family that was born here. Even their own children were born here. So their children are citizens of the United States. And if they're deported, they're separated from their children. This is a safe spot. Um, that I don't, I'm not aware of any situation that um, for any specific student impacting them, but I do know that the superintendent has made it very clear to us that if there ever was a moment if any immigration services um, agents showed up, um, that they would, um, we would hold them in the office and we would contact our superintendent and um, go from there. That we would not allow um, agents to come in, go through the hallways and um, have any contact with any students. Many politicians from both sides of the party have denounced Trump's action and released statements in favor of DACA. So President Trump has said it's up to Congress to pass a law to make this a permanent, to make DACA permanent or some version of it permanent. So what people can do is um, write to their Congress people, their senators, their representatives in Washington, and ask them to move on this issue, to try to pass a law to make these people still have, either still have the option to register for DACA and continue the program as it is, or to find some pathway to citizenship for them. The policies of Northampton Public Schools will not change, and DACA students find themselves in a safe space where they can get an education. I'm Flor Castillo, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Good morrow. I'm Gaming Terra. Yeah, I'm in a tire, but who cares? Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? First things first, something crucial has to be addressed. There was a rumor started last year that teams would lose their upcoming games after being on Hamped Up. I'm here to tell you that that curse is fake. I mean, yeah, the golf team, the boys soccer team, and the girls soccer team all suffered losses after being featured last week, but the football team did win, which proves my point that my role on this segment will annihilate the curse. This week, I investigated the issue of differences in advertising and attendance for different fall sports teams. I sat down with the field hockey team and the girls soccer team to find out what they think about the attendance in their games. I think our teams, especially um, like during daytime games, we definitely don't get as much people, but we have friends and family come, so there is a decent number of people. Definitely not as much as like a football game, though. I think our attendance for our sport is definitely like significantly lower compared to others. I think a lot of factors could be like our field doesn't have lights, so we can't really play at game times that are convenient for students. We play at four, so it's kind of an awkward time for students to go to. Uh, we also don't have bleachers, so you kind of have to either sit on the grass, bring your own chair and stuff. <laughs> One of the factors that may contribute to the attendance at games is advertising. We do spirit, um, which is like we dress up to a certain theme, um, and so people can figure out that we have a game that way, but um, compared to other sports, sometimes they have flyers, or uh, I know football has 
the last names on a football hung around the school, so we don't have that much um, advertisement. I think advertisement has gotten better for our games. It used to like pretty much be non-existent, but I think Kara has done a really good job of like kind of equalizing the advertisement for all fall sports, especially this year, which is really, really good. There are a couple of student groups that work to increase attendance at sports events. The Spirit Club and the Devil's Den. The Devil's Den, a student-run group that promotes and attends sporting events, had their first meeting on Monday. I asked Den organizer Emma Tanner on what the role of the Den will be this year. The Devil's Den is the student section here at Northampton High, and um, we come to all the athletic games to try to amp up the teams and support them in all their games. This year I'm helping to organize a lot of the um, spirits that they're going to do at games and to um, get a lot more people to show up to support our teams. So this year in particular we're not having a leader per se. It's going to be more of um, if you're consistently showing up you're going to take a more of a leadership role. So this year um, we have a little committee that we put together recently and um, we're going to try to really market a lot of the different sports so we have more supporters showing up. And so we'll be putting um, a big calendar in the office so everyone knows when the games are because that's been a really big issue that people just don't know there's a game. And um, we'll be having a Facebook page that anyone's welcome to join. And hopefully we'll get a Snapchat going where people can see the, all of the teams like doing their pregame stuff and that'll be an easy way to get the word out. Hopefully, with the new motive to improve advertising at sporting events, all teams will feel supported in their upcoming seasons. So far this season, both boys and girls cross-country teams are 1-0. The boys soccer team lost their first two games, and the girls soccer team is 1-1. They have a home game today at 4 o'clock. The golf team lost 6-18 against Palmer, giving them a 1-2 record. Field hockey is 1-1, and the football team is 1-0. They have a home game tonight at 7 o'clock. The spirit is Navy out. Thanks for watching Pamped Up. I'm Gabe Gatera. Back to you, Robin. Thanks for watching. Jesse and I are from Northampton High School Student Union, an elected group that represents the students at the school. Every second and fourth Wednesday of the month, we have an open meeting to address a variety of student issues, from AP testing policy to gender neutral bathroom accessibility. Our meetings are held at 6.30 p.m. in the library. If you are a freshman and would like to run for Student Union, pick up nomination papers in the front office as soon as possible. Don't forget to check out NHSTechnology.org for this week's online extra, where Eli and Christian investigate whether you'd be better off fighting a bear or a bunch of enormous moths. Mm -hmm.